Okay, good morning. We're going to be talking to this talk, talk number three. I'm Todd Jersey. Uh, this is me here. My firm is Todd Jersey Architecture, Inc. You are in the loft of our wonderful office in Berkeley, California. Here's my cell number, 510-334-3626. You can text me or call me anytime. My email address, Todd at ToddJerseyArchitecture.com. My staff is with me, and there's a couple of guests. Thank you for being here live. Um, Periodically, I do a talk on, a, on an important subject in the field of architecture. Today, we're going to be talking about second story additions. So, um, last night before I looked, before, be, just to get a couple of extra ideas, I looked online and I saw, and, and I just texted, I mean, I just Googled uh, second story additions. And, and what came up mostly was it was, looked like it was all written by risk managers. All the problems with second doing second story additions and how difficult they are, they are and expensive and how long they take. And I'll get into a little bit of that, but I don't want to start there. I want to start with the reasons why, uh, especially in the greater Bay Area and in a sort of high, higher value urban areas, why second story additions such a great thing to do for a homeowner. So when you're considering, uh, so some of the reasons for going up rather than if you're needing more space. Obviously, that's what dr driving you. You're wanting and needing more space. Going out. So to go, the reason they're going up is you're adding square footage for your home without paying what I'm calling paying for the land. You're not, you're not using, you're able to keep your, uh, you keep your open space. And, that, and that's a big deal, especially for a scarce amount of open space we have in the inner city. You, you typically, when you're doing a second story, you're going to improve your curb appeal and the marketability of the home. The home's going to look bigger, more dramatic, and typically more beautiful. You'll increase your energy efficiency uh, quite a bit, and this is uh, uh, because you're going to increase, you're going to decrease your surface to volume ratio. So the amount of the amount of uh, actual surface to the volume is much less in a, in, in a, in a two-story home. So you have less exterior walls to lose heat from. So you'll, uh, you'll also increase your solar exposure. That, this is sort of makes sense, right? You're, you're going up, the sun is up here, you're gonna go up past trees. When, when we did our house, we went up past our neighbors and we gathered all the sun that was the neighbor basically in the wintertime. So we gained both passive solar heat that we want in the winter and we also, we have all, our uh, access for our solar panels. So that's a, a great reason to go up is increasing your solar exposure and access. You, in an area like Berkeley, Oakland, El Cerrito, in the, in the larger, in the inner city areas, the, the financial return is fantastic on something like this. You're gonna be paying somewhere around $500 a square foot to create this project, and right out the door, is that square footage is gonna be worth, on, on the, in the market, a thousand square feet. And it's gonna rise. So, it's what, yeah, so um, we jump to seven, you basically create for yourself a high interest savings account, an equity builder. And this is the foundation of typical middle income uh, uh, people's retirement. You want to build your equity. So it's the best place to put your money is not in, not in the stock market, in your home. Take it out of your stock market, build your second story addition, <laughs> you'll be happy. You're going to have a larger home at a lower tax base. So if you have, if you now you bought a single, you know, a single story or two bedroom house, now you have three children. You just need more space. You can sell your home, buy a new home, but you'll now have the new tax base of the larger amount that you pay for the home. So if you paid originally five hundred thousand, you sell that, you 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 buy it, and your tax base is five hundred thousand. You sell that and you buy a million dollar house, you're now paying property tax on a million dollars. If you add, it's a much smaller increment. The counties do not say, okay, now, you, so it would be somewhere around two, probably another $200,000 on your tax base. So you're, you're gonna reduce and keep your tax base lower if you add to your own home rather than buy a new home and get a larger home that way. Um, you improve your existing home as a necessary outcome of, of putting on a second story. It's kind of a good thing. Um, it's, it forces you to improve your existing home. The, the flip side of that is I probably 
don't necessarily recommend if you're house, if you have a single story house that's absolutely in great shape. It's been remodeled. You've poured two hundred thousand dollars into it. Uh, it's going to rip up a lot of the stuff that you put money into it. But if you have a single story house like most of us have, it's either never been improved or been slightly improved over the years. It was built in the twenties or thirties or forties, like most of the, the Bay Area stock uh, or earlier. That's a perfect candidate for a second story addition because your foundation needs to upgrade in any way. Your systems are all needing upgrading anyway. So you come in, you put a second story in, you, you've recreated this whole house. Uh, so it's a great excuse, uh, an opportunity to, to do a full, fully holistic remodel and recreation of a house. So, and we'll talk about that when we talk about this little, this little scheme I've created. So, um, and then we'll go to this last. So, so after you, after I've convinced you to add a second level, the, the, the really the next topic is on your place is whether you, and you, people have seen this, whether you lift the house and you build your second level on the ground level, right? You, you, you add a level below this existing house you have, or you keep the existing house as is and you add above the, the existing structure. And you see about 25, say about 25% of the, the second story additions in the Bay Area around here are lifts. And about 75% are, you keep, it, you keep it as it is. So there are pros and cons of doing both. And we'll just go over those, those and you start, start to think about this. So the first one is lifting the house. So first of all, lifting a house is, is, is relatively inexpensive to do. The people who lift houses are incredibly fast at it and if your house is basically straightforward, it's very easy to do. So don't be intimidated by this idea of, 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 uh, uh, of lifting a house. The pros of, about lifting a house is it preserves the architectural roof lines, right? And, and if you have really nice roof lines, that's, a, that's, that's something you want to preserve. Um, it's better for aging and access because now you've lifted the house and you have the opportunity now to build at the grade level this new addition rather than the typical three or four feet up from grade. So it's much better for wheelchair accessibility. It also creates, when you're building what we call slab on grade, the floor is actually at, you know, six inches above your, your grade level, your outdoor level, is it's a much nicer relationship to the outdoor. So now you get this wonderful thing where we like in contemporary living where you have big doors to the outside and you're walking right out at a grade level patio. So that is a really nice uh, benefit of lifting a house, building, a, building your, uh, your new floor as the first floor. Um, it also lowers the overall height of the building, which is also an advantage. The cons, um, when you're lifting that level, you've really con pretty much constrained yourself to the size of that house as your second story. Often the program for a second story is slightly larger than the first floor. We'll get into that over here. So it's nice to be able to, if you have that program and it's slightly larger, it's easy to build a second story that just has an overhang in the front or in the back and it creates a covered porch. So it's very easy to, uh, uh, to do that if you, uh, it's, it's, it's harder to do that if you're lifting a house. Um, you, the other, the other thing, the other con about lifting is you, you typically can destroy your historic entrance. And some, some of these homes, some of our homes, all of there have beautiful, wonderful historic entrance way. So that's something to consider when you're, you're thinking about lifting. Uh, pros and cons of adding above. The pros is you're preserving your original entry, so we're, we're not getting into that. Uh, and you're preserving crawl space, which is which is that space under your first floor where a lot of your mechanical and electrical and utilities. So it's going to be a little less expensive to add than it is because you're redoing all of your uh, all of your uh, your wiring and your mechanical mechanical systems on the ground level. So um, let's see. Let's go over to the process and and then uh, sort of a reality check. This is a little bit on the. Uh, so you, if you're considering doing this, um, some of this is pretty, pretty um, obvious. But it is a complex uh, process. 
It requires professional services and municipal approval, so you have to get building permits and planning permits from cities. And this can take a while. This is a little complex. It's not the fun part of the job. Um, it is expensive and time consuming, um, but again, it has an incredible return on investment. But you do need access to funds and you need access to capital. Uh, and you can't live in the house. So it's really, it's really not a viable thing unless you're a single person uh, to live in the residence while this is, while you're. Uh, one of the things I think about a lot is if you're planning to sell your house, you move out, move, move out, buy your new house, put in a second story addition, and you've just created a couple hundred thousand dollars of value for yourself before you, before you uh, move out. So that, that'd be something, if, you, if you're in that situation, you've got a single story house, you're ready to sell it. If you want to make some more money, that's, this is the best, this is what I would do if I was selling a single story house. I would look at my new house, I would add an addition, I would optimize its about market value, and then sell it. Um, so I wouldn't want to foreclose on that potential just by selling the house. So a couple of common mistakes, you, everybody's seen these, where it's obvious there's an addition. <laughs> you know, it's like, here's this wonderful, you know, wonderful craftsman bungalow, and then this thing comes up, and, and this is stucco, and this was, you know, this was wood, and this is, is bulky, it looks wrong. Um, it's very simple to integrate roof lines. There's a million ways to do it, but this is just a very simple thing. Here is the old, here's the old craftsman roof line here. I pulled the roof off. By the way, the, the, if there's not a lot of roof features, the actual roofing is not an expensive thing to replace. So that's, it, you don't need to be, one of the things people think, well, I don't have enough space in my head. I'll look at an attic and think it's too low, and then they'll foreclose the idea of doing a second story. It's so easy to rip off that roof, build a higher pitch roof, put in dormers. Dormers are your secret to making beautiful, uh, beautiful second stories. Uh, dormers are the little roof windows. This is what's called a shed dormer. There are gable dormers everybody's familiar with, too. The little gable dormers. The shed dormers are infinitely cheaper and easier to build and let more light and better for space. I would never put on a gable door. They're expensive, they really constrain the space. But, you know, a nice use of uh, shed dormers on a building and then you can keep, you, 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 it also helps to scale down the building and make it still, still feel like, you know, neighbor friendly. This, this, something like this is going to be easy to approve. Then na your neighbor's going to like it versus something that comes up, obviously, comes up like that. So you want to, you uh, that's where your architect's gonna come in and really help you create uh, the second story with, that's appealing. And this, of course, you want, the, you want, a best, you want your best looking building to, because you want it to look good and, and it's, it's great for you and it's great for your marketability. The second common mistake is a failure to capture the sun for solar and passive heat gain. People aren't thinking about Pitching the roof in the way that the, the um, towards the south, towards the southwest, to pick up this, uh, to pick up the, the solar heat gain, and also that's how you want to place your solar panels on that south and southwest side. So that's another thing I see a lot is just it's so easy to do. It's just something you think about, something your architect should should know about. Uh, and then this is a simple little example of the power of adding a second story addition. I've drawn a very rudimentary, not to scale. Um, um, very standard uh, two, two bed, existing two bedroom, one bath house built in the 1920s. These, these are all over the place. This was a bathroom, I mean the bedroom, two bedrooms, uh, living, little, bit, little dining, a little tiny little kitchen, right? So we rip out the two bedrooms. Let's go away. This whole thing becomes a nice big great room with a stair to the second level in the front. We keep the bathroom because we don't want to move the plumbing. We don't have to. We want a bathroom. We turn this into a bathroom laundry because now it only has to be a half bath. We have now a big kitchen with a breakfast nook right off the back deck, more of a formal dining area, and then a living area. So we've got a wonderful open contemporary floor plan from a very constrained little cell not attractive at all. We then put all the bedrooms where they should be is up on the second level. So 
This is about 750 to 800 square feet, a typical two bedroom, one bath house. And some of you that are listening to this have, have these, everybody knows, everybody, they're all around Berkeley, Oakland, El Cerrito, Richmond, all around the East Bay, San Francisco. So many of these were built with working class families or lower income families in the, in, from the teens all the way up to the 40s. Um, so this is, this is, by the way, this is the candidate that's most, most suited for a second story kitchen. We then, and this is on a small piece of property, right? 25 to 35 by 100. Here's our second level, very simple. We've got our stairs that come up through to the middle. We've got a bathroom built right on top of this existing bathroom. We're sharing the plumbing. We've got two kids' bath bedrooms in the back, and we have a master suite in the front looking at the street. 750 square feet is what we need for this three bedroom, two bath. Huh, lo and behold, we had 750 square feet to begin with. We might want it a little bit bigger. If we're, if we're adding, if we want it a little bit bigger, we can pop out in the front of the bath. So we've gone from a cramped, unremodeled, chilly, drafty, not that attractive, maybe it's cute on the front, uh, dra drafty, uh, energy inefficient house. We've now transformed it, 750 square feet. We've transformed it to a 1,500 square feet, three bedroom, two and a half bath. Three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1,500 square feet, all energy efficient, contemporary lighting, new kitchen, deck in the back. This, we've gone from a house, so, and we've spent, I'm gonna go out a limb here, we spent $550,000 on this. But we've added, we've probably added that much value to the house. So we've added that much value to the house right, right off the bat. So we haven't lost money, we've invested. And then as, as, as the market continues to climb, as it does historically, especially in an area like this, this becomes savings account, right? This is our equity. We are going to be making good money off of that investment over the next 10, 20, 20 years. And, and then when you're ready to sell the house, you are selling a, you're making good money. So I had, I pushed one of my clients years ago, about 15 years ago, I pushed him into being a little uncomfortable. Instead of building a smaller second story, I pushed him into building a full second story and doing this with it. Getting the bedrooms up, opening up more of this, more of the square footage. They spent, they had to go into the piggy bank and the parents' account to get the money. They, they wrote me a letter three years later thanking me because of the fortune they made when they sold the house. We were moving to a different era, area. We made a fortune out of this. We would not have made, made as much money. So really good return on investment. So that's, that's, that's the basic idea. You know, that, that your your return on your investment, for, you know, it is a lot of work, but you couldn't put your money into a better in, in, into a better investment than adding a second story, especially in the Bay Area. Do we have any questions? Um, any questions from the We have a question yeah. from um, someone who signed on. <clears throat> what are some of the biggest problems you encounter with older buildings? Um, well, let's say uh, older buildings. Uh, the problems and opportunities of the older buildings is that if the older buildings don't, their mechanical systems and their electrical systems and their plumbing systems are need to be upgraded. And usually their kitchens are, are bad. Often they have dry rot, they have water, water intrusion issues. Uh, on the positive side, the older buildings are built with old growth wood. Old growth wood is incredibly strong. It's two times as strong as the wood we have now. Uh, they, often, they often have wonderful old features that you can incorporate into a new building. So um, I'm, I'm a fan of purchasing um, a 2-1 and go ahead, it's, it's actually if you're looking for a house and you can buy yourself some time, you've, you've got the investment money to be able to live in your old house and you want a family house, this is a superb idea. Because not only do you buy low and then you add, but you have customized the house for you. For your for your needs. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I think one of our audience members has a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if I were to hire you, what what do you do as an architect for this project? What, what do I do 
bring the project? Well, I bring all all the experience and, and ideas that architects, you know, we're, co we're comprehensive problem solvers. And the biggest thing that we bring to you as a potential client are, we're going to help you optimize the, the design for your needs. Um, you don't need uh, to hire a professional architect for a residential job, but if you do not hire an architect and you just have a builder designer, you will you will probably have a, 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 a design, a, an end product that's, that's not quite hitting the mark because that's what we're trained to do. You'll also lose out financially because there's a great, wonderful tension, an important, healthy tension between an architect and a builder. The architect's going to fight to make the project cheaper. <laughs> they're going to push, they're going to fight the contractor. The contractor's going to fight the architect. That's healthy for you as the owner. If you lose that, you just have your builder do it. They're not going to be incentivized to save you money because it's paying for that. So I, I am a firm believer that architects sa save clients money, even though what you're, they're paying. I mean, you are having to pay a builder to do the design work. So we're better at it. Architects are better at it. Uh, the biggest thing we do is we we create your we we pull in your vision and your need your program, create make it reality and of course we work in interface with the municipal the approvals process. So I mean the biggest reason outside of just good design is all these projects require permitting. So architects are that's what we do. We get permits from cities. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So what challenges do architects face while dealing with city for getting the permits? What changes? Challenges. Challenges. So that, that's a great question, whoever asked it, because that's the largest challenge for for a homeowner, a design team. And that's one it also goes to Susan's questions of what do architects do, which is the skilled and experienced architect knows how to navigate that's fairly Fairly, not, a, not, not an easy process, and my staff is, is shaking their head because they know um, how difficult it can be to get, you know, get approval and get. Uh, so when you're doing a second story, you're going to need two things. You're going to need two permits. You're going to need a permit from the planning department to approve what you're trying to do. So the planning department is interested in, in the impacts to the neighbors. So if it's Shading, they're going to want to know how much shading is going on. They're going to want to know if you have enough parking. They're, they're going to know what color it is. So it's sort of a design review, if you will. Once you pass that, and that's the most difficult part, you then get a building permit. The building permit's interested in what kind of wood you're using, it's the structural engineering. So they, are, they have two different, so you, you have to go through two distinct processes. Um, and so it's a, um, it's a difficult you know, and, uh, what was the question? <laughs> you guys are distracting me. What was the question? Challenges in challenges. getting the building permit. Right. So, so the challenges are dealing with your neighbors, uh, neighbors' fears and neighbors' concerns. Uh, it's probably your, your largest challenge. Um, neighbors don't want new, you know, you know, your adjacent neighbors are often going to be afraid of you having, you know, blocking their view, blocking their sun is the number one. Those are the two things. A good architect is going to work with the neighbors to be able to soften the building, soften the impact, um, and so that the neighbors are less, basically, less afraid and aren't going to challenge your project. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest, the biggest challenge. Uh, how do you feel about adding a separate rental space to a home? Great idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you know, one one thing is if. Another, another opportunity that opens up for you if you add a second story is you could carve out a back piece of this and add in what's called an ADU, accessory dwelling unit, and then create rental income on that without losing your yard. Um, you, could, you could add the ADU upstairs. So California law, the current California law now allows people to put in what we used to call in-laws into existing homes. You, it could be a freestanding in the backyard, but that takes up a lot of your yard. I think preferably it's upstairs. It's part of your upstairs. That's a really cool way to do it. You have your separate entry, you have a separate so you, you preserve your backyard. Um, there's, uh, there's constraints in the size that that second unit can be. 
Uh, and you do, and the new California law does not require you to add off street parking. So that, that was the big limiter because people don't have enough room for another parking space uh, to add in second, lot, second units. If you're in the zoning that where you can get a second car in there and, you, and you're allowed by zoning to add another unit, you could, you could change your, from a single store, you could do a, do a completely different unit on the second level. So you could make a duplex out of it. It's a great question because it, it brings to mind, well, check your, you can check your zoning, you can call us, we'll check them for you to see what the development opportunities for on your piece of property. If you have a large piece of land, at a small house and, you're a, and you see apartments around you or you see multiple duplexes, likely you're in a, uh, a zone that allows for multiple, multiple dwellings. If you can get that another unit, if you have two car garage or you can get a second car in there, you can do a second unit. That's a wonderful way to, to increase your income. Is that it? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. I'm considering adding a second story to my home. Yes. And uh, if I approach you, would you help me with consultation or yes. take me through the whole process? How does that work? Yeah, so we start with, so I would visit your house and I would consult with you at no cost. So the, our first visit is always no cost. And it's usually an hour and a half. And we look at all, the, all these kinds of things, all these kinds of issues. Talk to you about timeline and your needs. And it's uh, 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 and then if it makes sense for you to do a project and you like you like working with us, then then we take the next step. I okay. I have a question. Yes. Sustainability, which process is most efficient? Adding a level below or um, adding a level above? For sustainability. Yeah. Energy efficiency. Yeah. They're equal. Yeah. yeah, there wouldn't be any. Okay. We sign off. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next Talk Talk.